warm welcome to Joburg Today. I'm Zizi Ndevu. The Fine Woman Network Breakfast taught women how to put their best foot forward in business and we were there. I'd like everybody to walk out of here with an understanding of the power behind speaking. What I mean by that is if we hope to lead people and to influence them, we need to step up as well. We need to develop the skills that are required, we need to have the courage and we need to apply ourselves to it. We can't sit in a corner and then wonder why we don't get an opportunity to make an impact. So if you're one of those people who wants to make an impact in the world that surrounds you, I'd really encourage you to master the art of professional speaking. And we've been talking to a bunch of fine women at the Fine Women Network, helping them to create their very own elevator pitches. Everybody has an opportunity to meet somebody influential at some point in their lives, but most of us are not prepared for it. I came here to get some um, hints and insights on how to present myself in 60 seconds and Shelly has done a fantastic, magnificent job. Uh, so yeah, definitely I can apply and adopt uh, strategies that she's been mentioning in my personal capacity and in terms of uh, the business as well. I came here with my company Scan Display. It was my first time coming through here. It's insanely amazing. I've learned so much from this seminar, confidence, building up, womanhood. This is my second time attending and I love being around like-minded women and you really leave with amazing tools and techniques that are relevant to what you're trying to achieve in the world and in business. It's so stimulating, it's, it's a, a great way to network and also to think collectively and find out more about how to be more effective and successful in life. Why do we not have more women in leadership? Now, while it may be true that you can lead without necessarily being a skilled speaker, I have yet to meet somebody who is a skilled speaker who is not also a leader. With women breaking into business every single day, it seems that the Fine Women's Networking Breakfast is just the place to cultivate and inspire women to reach for new heights of success. I'm Riley Shagani Posakwe for Joburg Today. This is Yolanda, and you're watching Joburg Today. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, joburgtoday.tv. Follow us on Twitter, at Joburg Today. And if you're on the move, then pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an I. The Pagama graduation celebrated young professionals and prepared them for the corporate world. Pagama means rise up. And the objective of Pagama Women's Academy is to equip final year university students for the corporate world. There are seven modules and the modules are ranging from how to uh, craft your CV, how to interview, how to dress up for the corporate world, how to look after your personal branding and also how to have boardroom etiquettes, how to crystallize your goals, how to have a vision. So we go through a criteria process. Firstly, they've got to get over 65% academically. They've got to have a passion to make a difference in their communities or in society. And how, what they're going to do with Pakama of paying it forward for other women as well. Part of the program is uh, each of the 26 candidates have assigned a mentor to them. I learned a lot from my mentor. She was not only a mentor but also a coach. So she really taught me a lot. And the Pagama Women's Academy was just why I think it's just one thing that every woman needs in order to be ready for the corporate world. I've learned now what I want to do you know, my strongest points and how to apply my strongest points to marketing. So I would like to introduce those kind of things in organizations. So not only a few organizations help out because I just believe it's not only about a brand, but you need to cater for the community around you. The Pagama Women's Academy has given its first group of young women in Johannesburg an opportunity to empower themselves and boost their self-confidence and in the process motivate and build others in their communities. I'm Bituman Larato Kwena for Jobek Today. Hi, I'm Tansy Katsia, former Miss South Africa 2007, and you're watching Joburg Today. We had a chat with the very inspiring Dr. Sondesi. In studio today, we're joined by Dr. Sondesi, Africa's first woman to obtain a doctorate in experimental physics or correlated matter. Welcome to Joic Today. Thank you, it's so nice to be here. Thank you so much. Before thank we get into the discussion, what is experimental physics of correlated matter? <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds like a very, very big name, 
But I guess uh, it, it's even easier when you start by what is experimental physics. Uh, it's one of the fields that uh, one can embark on if you want to continue doing more research in, the, in your field, especially in physics. There's what we call theoretical physics and there's also experimental physics. So in the experimental physics, so what, what a person does, uh, you need to go and go to the lab and be hands-on and do your own experiment. Other than uh, doing, if you do theoretical physics, what you do, you take the existing data or you just uh, get data somewhere and then you analyze that data. So in the experimental physics, you need to start by investigating the kind of work that you want to do. So it's that way, way back than before you could go to the lab. You firstly go to literature, search the literature about the work that you want to do. Because if, when you do the PhD, you're not supposed to do the work that has been done before. So you have to do your uh, literature search very thoroughly. So what we did is to start by manufacturing the samples themselves. So you don't get samples from anywhere. You manufacture your own samples. You need to calculate the, 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 the ratios. And they must be accurate because you don't want to get the measurement and say this is from this particular um, sample and you find that it's not the, uh, the, the, the sample that you are saying. So all that accuracy and precision is very important if you do experimental physics because you start everything from scratch. Sounds very interesting. Yes. Uh, but obtaining a doctorate is not easy at all. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you came across and how did you overcome? In experimental physics, there are, there are more than one challenge. Other than the challenge of trying to understand what, what, what you're working on, other than the challenge of analyzing, before you could even do that, the first challenge is to do the experiment. First of all, we, we, you need to make sure that are there any equipment to, 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 to do those experiments. So uh, fortunately, in our labs, we, we have such equipment, we have such apparatus that uh, manage to, to, to measure what we wanted. But now the, the next challenge is uh, to use that equipment and the time uh, that, that you need to use it. So you've, sometimes you have to be in the lab in the odd hours of the day. So those are some of the challenges that, that, that we face when you have to do experimental physics. The Department of Education is focusing on maths and science as, as key subjects, uh, particularly within the youth and trying to engage the youth within those subjects itself. But what do you think needs to be done in order to attract students to study maths-related careers, to study science-related careers? I think we, we need to start way back from, from grade, grade 9 because this is where the, the learners start choosing whether in the following year, which is grade 10, whether they'll be choosing maths-related or science-related uh, subjects. So from, from that level, the grade 9 level, we need to, to, to have some, so some programs in place, the programs that will help the students into, into understanding maths and I would also recommend that we, we, we try and make sure that most students do pure maths other than uh, maths lead. Because when the students finish his metric with the maths lead, you find that he becomes limited in what he can choose when you go into the university. You just mentioned now uh, taking science from you know, grade, grade 10 to matric and then mm -hmm. pursuing a degree after that. But the gap between your matric year and varsity and, and having a higher qualification in science and maths, mm -hmm. uh, that transition is also not easy for students. So what do you think tertiary, um, de the department are, are focusing on the tertiary level education mm -hmm. can do to ensure that students are equipped from that gap? So not just the high mm -hmm. school, but moving on to mm -hmm. the higher qualification itself. There are discussions that are already going on that should we extend the three-year degree into four years so that that first year will try and bridge the gap between the work that has been done in the metric and the work that is expected at the university level. So I believe that uh, probably with the, with the prolonged and the understanding of the need of having an extended degree, that gap will be easily be, be bridged and we can find more students graduating in four years rather than now because we're struggling to get more, more throughput or the output of students when they register for the three-year degree, you find that they take even five years, four to five years. So it's even, I think uh, it's, a, it's, it's a way to go that from the beginning, the students are, are enrolled for a four-year degree and they are taken slowly to the program and then they, we are able to bridge that gap between the metric and the, and the university level. A young person who's watching you right now and, and, and is just inspired by your story and all that you've achieved, what advice would you give them moving forward? The advice would be, I think the first thing, know what you want to do. Keep that dream in, in front of you uh, shining and uh, do anything and everything you can to make sure that you reach for that goal. And uh, I would also say you must always be prepared, not only for the known, but also be prepared for the unknown because you don't know what will tomorrow uh, require of you. 
So being ready all the time, it, it's what will, will make sure that you reach your dream. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Hi, I'm Samantha Jessamine and you're watching Joburg Today. For more stories on the city, check out our special focus section, as well as Joburg in your pocket for all that's happening in and around Johannesburg. That's it from me, Zizi. I leave you a day fun for and Luna Girl. My Luna girl, you are the reason I'm of love. You are the sea beneath the sun, my only one. I cannot try to even show you all my love. Your sexy, scrumptious woman, you are the one. My Luna girl, with every breath that I may take It would just be a big mistake without you My only wish is that I will spend each day with you And everything that I go through, you go through too Cause I got a whole lot of love, whole lot of love to share But I've been running in circles free the last been unfair But hold on A woman Here I come, yeah I feel you In the deepest way I got a whole lot of love, whole lot of love to share But I've been running in circles, feeling the life's been unfair Said I got a whole lot of love, whole lot of love to share But I've been running in circles, feeling the life's been unfair But hold up Woman, here I can